Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Deborah Giddens with the Women's Business Center Program Coordinator, and we're going to let our um, instructor today introduce herself. Everyone, my name is Akosia Echamponma. It's so good to have you all. I'm very excited about this training today. All right, so should I just go ahead and get started? Oh, absolutely. We have 10 awesome. people logged in. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is pronounced Akosia. So if you, you're welcome to let me know if you want to learn how to pronounce it. But before we get started, I think there's a few of us. So I would like for you to quickly tell me your name and what you do for business and what your business is. So I can track in my head the type of businesses we have in house. All right, let's start with Margaret, please. Good morning. I'm Margaret Bradley, and clients have described me as being an excuseologist. I'm a combination of a business psychologist and an expert on getting rid of excuses. And I work with individuals and teams to help them flourish in brand new circumstances. Awesome, nice to meet you. Thank you. All right, Gina, could you please introduce yourself? Thank you, yep. and your business? My name is Gina Burbine and I am a kitchen designer of just over 15 years. And I recently uh, left my long-term 15 year employment and I'm starting my own business, um, wow. designing and selling kitchens. So yeah. Nice move. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Scary move, but exciting. Right. Awesome. Um, Margarita, please. Good morning. My name is Marquita, and I am a thrift store owner. <laughs> Soon to be millionaire, hopefully. <laughs> Gotta say it like you believe it. Yeah, I, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> they say it starts with the mindset. I am a millionaire. Absolutely. <laughs> I am a millionaire. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. All right. Cheryl Tan, go ahead, please. Good to see you. Hi there. Good morning. It is so good to see you. I love Canva and I'm so excited to be here. Um, I am a consultant and a business owner and I work with people to help them show up with more confidence on camera. I work with marketing teams to help them use video in the marketing of their businesses. And I, I love helping people find that confidence to say what they need to say on video. Wow, good to have you. Thank you. Um, I remember a while ago when I first met you and you were doing videos, but more than ever, videos is it. And we all need to figure it out. So welcome. Yep. All right, Rachel, go ahead, please. Okay, we will just move on to Nadine. Uh, good morning. My name is Nadine Joyner, and Nadine, I am. A, sorry. Uh, yes, no, no, no problem. Uh, I'm a caterer. <laughs> nice to meet you. All nice right. Well, uh, who do we have? Karine. Hello. Um, my name is Karin, and um, I'm doing some uh, training for interior designer. So uh, I haven't started yet my business, but I'm on the way, hopefully. And uh, this is why I'm, I'm doing this today with you, because uh, I know that lots of people use Canva, and mm -hmm. uh, I've never used it. So just wonder uh, how you use it um, to figure it out if it would if it would be good for me in the future or not. Perfect. You're totally at the right place, both um, starting and also getting to use Canva. 
Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Koala. I hope, I think this is the same Koala I know. Yes, hello. Hi. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you for hosting this training. I'm here today to, uh, to learn about um, designing a brand. Um, I don't know if I have the right understanding, but right now I have my own brand that I started putting on t-shirts. Okay. So I'm hoping that this training will help me, will guide me better. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, we'll be able to help you with that. All right. Um, I think we have a few more. Sylvia, please go ahead. Sylvia, do you want to unmute and introduce yourself? We actually have two Sylvias registered for today, so I need to know which Sylvia we're speaking with. Oh. Okay, we'll just um, move on to Sona. Sona, please unmute and introduce yourself to us. All right. I think the last person is ABT LLC. We don't have your first name. Good morning, everyone. Um, Array Business and Technology. Are, are you hearing me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Great. My name is Norma Williams. Uh, I retired Army uh, 20 years, uh, 10 days. Uh, so I am an Army veteran, as well as in the field of contracting, government contracting for about uh, over 10 years. So I've uh, been out for a while and just decided to come back to my hometown after um, uh, life changes, you know, raising kids uh, uh, um, on my own now. So nice. decided to come back to my hometown, a little small place of 32,000. Petersburg, Virginia is where I was cultivated or raised or reared and give back uh, because it has a high poverty rate. So I decided mm -hmm. to open up a business, take my knowledge and skills and try to help the community uh, try to help in any way that I can. First, of course, by revenue with opening the business. And I must say, um, to help my youth, to help those with job skills is what I focus on. I've, I've been a human resources, employee training and development is my specialty. And virtual training for the past, uh, probably for the past five years, I've uh, been doing virtual as well as uh, going out as part of a mobile training team. But anyway, Still working full time and uh, probably been in business for about 10 months now, but uh, I haven't reached that point of branching completely off because with uh, trying to manage and upkeep of my business, you know, I still have to work because I am on my own. But the most challenging thing that I have found where I, mm -hmm. you know, I have a bit, I have a building, I have, you know, furnishings, I have, I mean, you know, because I am HR background. The biggest uh -huh. challenge I've faced is my brand is a web page. I do have, you know, the GoDaddy uh, where I've registered my business and just trying to get a web page stand stood up and right. come up with an actual uh, a logo. But you know, maybe not a logo, but that has been the biggest challenge for me. So, well, yeah, yeah, we'll be able to help you with that. Well, great. great. Marketing. And welcome, everyone, again. It's great to yes. be here. Nice to meet you. Pleasure as well. Awesome. I think a few more people have joined, and I missed. We have a Crystal. I don't have her registered, though. Crystal? Crystal, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello. My name is Crystal Ajavon. What did, did, what did you register under? I I invited Crystal this morning. She didn't she didn't get to register. Okay. Go ahead with your introduction. Go ahead, Crystal. What do you want to learn today? Oh, um, I would like to learn um, you know, basically 
how to set up websites for business, um, you know, cool marketing techniques and such. Awesome. All right. I think we have everyone. If we missed you, you can just put it in the chat. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, like I mentioned, my name is Akosia Champumangwala. Um, some of you may know me because uh, I work with in Norfolk State University. I'm the director for the NSU Innovation Center, but I also have my own business and we're called City Lighter. What we do is that we are here for um, you, for businesses to really help people that are hiding. The reason why it's called City Lighter is because the world is so noisy right now and it's going to get worse and worse. And I believe, we believe there are great people behind problems and solutions that can be brought into the light, that can be brought into the world and into different cities to really, you know, alleviate people's problems and challenges. We believe that businesses are more than just a business. You're a problem solver. So what we do is we don't just help business owners. We help entrepreneurs, innovators, um, city um, rep representatives to really transform transform into being a problem solver, not just having a business or working nine to five, but really solving problems. Uh, we teach you how to do that. And we also teach you how to be a designer, how to think like a designer, how to start off designing a problem solution or having a framework before going into details. We also teach you how to be a creator and what it takes for you to actually make those ideas and dreams a reality. So that is what we do. We use different methodologies like design thinking, lean startup. We help with strategic foresight. You know, what does 10 years look like from now, especially in this digital era? How do I move on 10 years from now? And so it's a pleasure to be here today. So our brand really got started out of that problem of constantly having people um, asking me how to help them with the ideas, how to help them with the solutions. And I love working for Norfolk State Innovation Center, but I don't really get as much opportunity to um, work with entrepreneurs myself and, you know, really guide people myself. I more like pull resources together to help entrepreneurs, but I also definitely love working one-on-one -on -one with people in group setting. Um, so that is how our brand really got started to really be that for people. All right, so my little story about Canva. I actually got started with Canva because of my church. Um, I know Canva was established in 2014, 20, uh, not 2014, 2012. Canva was established in Australia in 2012. And by 2015, you know, Americans were using it as well, but it wasn't really well known in 2014, 2015 ish. That was when I really got started with Canva. Um, like yourself, I am one with many ideas that you know you want to bring to life. I am that person. <laughs> so I thought, okay, let me try using Adobe, right? How many of you have tried Adobe? Uh, try to design with Adobe? No. So yeah, it gets complicated, right? Those are for real graphic designers. So in my head, I'm like, by now, someone should totally figure out how I can just take a template, you know, online, kind of like in my head, I was like, kind of like publisher. Who, who used Publisher on Microsoft? No. So some of you have, I see some nods, but Publisher is kind of like Canva, but Canva has a great user experience than Publisher, okay? Publisher is used like Word. So I was like, man, they got to be something better than Publisher. And so I actually Googled it and Canva came up um, around 
that um, end of 2014, 2015. So the reason why I wanted to do that was because our church um, at Old Dominion University, um, most of our folks, we were gathering around Old Dominion University and we needed a graphic designer. <laughs> We need someone to be able to make flyers so we can post it around so the students can know about what we're doing. And I thought, oh, I have, you know, I have pretty good eyesight. Why not just try this myself? So once I went on Canva, I started without a template, you know, like that ego. Don't use a template. You can design this yourself. But um, I realized that uh my first design they actually literally laughed at me <laughs> I was like okay I need to go back and learn <laughs> I thought I could do it they literally laughed at me and so what I did was I started looking at other people's designs you know there's a website called creative market um if you want to look into that creative market are actually real designers that put you know, different designs out there that you actually buy and customize them. So I've, I've bought something from there before, but I really go there and kind of browse and get ideas, get inspired. So that was when I actually started making good designs in addition to using the templates that Canva has is that I saw many, many, many different types of design. So then I started realizing that, you know, our church has a particular message you know we want to bring the young generation into really using the word of god to make changes and so i also started realizing how to combine what the church stands for and what the youth will be looking for in designing so that is attractive especially you know college students these days it takes a lot to get their attention so that's how my story with Canva um, started. It really started from a problem that needed to be solved. And um, if you also are someone that have any idea, I advise you to look it up uh, before <laughs> you try to do it. I actually was thinking about starting something like Canva, but I'm glad Canva does it. I think they do it better. So that's how I really got started. And today, um, up to now, I've been training um, businesses and, you know, individuals that wants to learn how to use Canva. And also really, um, I also, most of you didn't know, but I worked with the Women's Business Center. That's really how I got my start, um, working with entrepreneurship uh, and, and working in the ecosystem. So I also, you know, established Canva there and you know, training other people there. I've used Canva, Netflix State. So we've used it everywhere and it makes our designs and our efforts look flawless um, and really communicates the message like a professional. So I am here. I know that some of you have not used it before. I tell my story to really let you know that I really started out as a kid that wanted to use Canva, you know, that wanted to make designs. And I learned it, you know, Canva is very user friendly, but it's more than just design, right? And that's what we're going to talk about because you are a problem solver, right? There are people out there that are looking for your solutions, right? And you're not just giving them a flyer, you're communicating what you can do for them, right? through your designs. So we're not just gonna start off, okay, let's go on camera and design. Probably some of you were thinking that way, but we want to go back to the problem that you're solving for your business because it's going to matter how you design, right? It's going to matter what your customers are looking for. So we're not gonna start off designing, but today I'm going to help you with my 10 simple strategies or 10 simple steps that will help you design your brand. And it doesn't just start with just going on Canva. It really starts with the problem that you're solving, the value that you're giving to your customers, all right? Um, and who your different customer segments are. So for example, 
Um, we have, I'm gonna pick on someone, like Corrine is an, wants to do interior design, right? She needs to figure out which customer segment she's going after, what group of people, what type of design she wants to go after. Those, all those are grouped in different customer segments. So you have different customer segments that branding would be different for each one of them. So I really want you to be able to know your customer segments before we actually move on. So you're not missing your customers, right? Together when you are communicating with them. I believe that's very important. So once we do that, we will move on into like what they what we call brand personality or brand identity. So if you think of your brand as a person, what would they look like, you know? So then we'll move on to you picking a brand name if you haven't already. We'll also move on to you designing your own logo, okay? Some of you may have a logo, but it doesn't hurt to actually learn how to design it yourself for free. And then you will also learn how to pick fonts that speak the right message that actually matters. You will also learn how to establish your voice. Um, someone mentioned, you know, the biggest challenge is the marketing, you know, branding. So your voice is very important and how you can do that through your design. Then you will also learn how to pick the right colors. Yeah, colors matter. You will also learn how to, um, identify imagery. So I would show you a cool website that you can get high quality photos for free that really speaks to what you're doing. Um, so you can add it to your designs. You will also learn how to finally design a brand kit. A brand kit is like your final brand guide for your company or your idea. That brand kit will include everything that we've mentioned here. Um, but Canva makes it even simpler to include all your colors, all your fonts on like a page where your team or you yourself could access it yourself and even the color codes, right? So that you don't keep missing, <laughs> you just don't go on Canva and, oh yeah, my color is yellow, but every time you use yellow, you're using a different shade of yellow. <laughs> yeah, people do that. So the brand kit will have all of that so that you don't have to make that mistake, okay? And then that will be it. So within the next three sessions, you will actually have to pull out your computer. Yeah, sign up for Canva if you haven't, and we'll go through all these steps, all right? If we have some time left, you will actually also have the opportunity to design different flyers, you know, different Facebook cover page and whatever you your immediate needs are. And I'll be right here to help you with that. So we have a, a set, I'm with you today till 12, next week from 10 to 12, and the next week, Saturday from 10 to 12, and the following week from 10 to 12, all right? Six full hours you're going to leave a master. It's quite that simple. I have worked with a 14 year old who has her own business, um, Precious Girl. She does like skincare. And this girl was like, I don't wanna just do skincare in my kitchen. I want manufacturers to do my skincare and I want the whole world to know about it. The girl was able to come up with her own name, her own brand, her own colors, fonts, and a landing page to start getting traffic, right? So to start getting names and emails that she can um, communicate with. Yes, a 14-year-old can do it. You can do it. You and I can do it. We can do it. <laughs> so let's um, kind of really get started. All right, so it starts with the value preposition. I want you to have something in your mind. The value proposition is the benefit that you offer to your customer or the benefit that you offer to... Um... Deborah, do you have your hand raised?
Sorry about that. I thought her hand was up. So um, the value of your position, again, is your benefit, the value that you offer to your customer, okay? And I start with the value proposition because you cannot forget that it's about the value, okay? And I myself forget this and I have to bring into remembrance that it's about the value. Sometimes you're waiting to pull out that perfect message, that perfect video, right? But stop and think, what is the value? Because if my hair is on fire and you're teaching me how to put it off out, I don't really care what you're wearing. You know what I mean? I don't really care how you sound, but we do all of that to provide the best um, offer and solutions to our folks. But the main focus should always be, what is the value that I offer to my customers, okay? And to start with that, you have to think that more about being customer-centered than being problem centered or I mean product or service centered. What I mean is when we have an idea, all we think about is the physical and the tangible service, right? Um, We're not really sometimes thinking about the customer from the customer's perspective, but the customer is the one that opens up their wallet, you know, after they see your designs and your message to actually buy from you, right? So we have to force ourselves to be customer centered. And I am doing this and bringing in this first because a lot of folks design things and it's just about them, right? Meanwhile, your customer is like looking elsewhere, thinking about something else or they attract it in a different way. So even in your design, it, it has to be customer centered with a bit of a merge of you yourself, but you can never go wrong if you are truly customer centered, okay? So it's not about your idea or product, it's about your customer. It's about the problem that you're solving for your customer. It's about solving an actual need, right? Right here I put is about solving, um, it's about what your customers desire. Um, It's about who your customers are and it's about satisfying that need. Okay, that's what the value proposition is. And the more we think about that, we will always have ideas, good ideas for our customers. All right, so what that means is the value proposition becomes the pain. Um, How do I place this? The easiest way to arrive to your value proposition is to think of the pain, the obstacles, the challenges, that your customers are facing, all right? I think it will be best if I talk about it, then you take time to write about it. What do you guys think? Or do you want me to go through all the slides and then we will actually write it out? Let me hear a few suggestions. I wanna do what's best for you. Do you want to go through everything, teaching wise, or? Yeah, a few people want to know if you, they will have access to your presentation. If I'll be able to send it out. Yes, you okay. can send it out. Okay. Hi, this is Nadine. I think I would like it if you just moved on and then go back once you go through everything. Awesome. Okay. We can do that. Either way, you will get what you need. So, okay. So the value proposition is about um, coming up with the pain reliever for those challenges as well. So the combination of both is what gives you the actual value that you are giving to your customer, right? So what alleviates those pains? All right, so the second thing is for you to think about your customer segments, okay? Now, I know you have an idea and you have, you already, you you know, we do a good job knowing like the persona, like the ideal person, 
but um, there's actually different segments. And that what segments is the groupings of the customers, right? Are what we call segments. So what you'll be doing is figuring out who they are, why they do what they do, where they are, their personas, then be able to categorize them. What do I mean by that is the slide. So someone that does a professional art supply business will have multiple customer segments, right? But an artist, the way you will talk to an artist is definitely different from the way you will talk to a retired person, right? And it will be definitely different from how you will talk to your teacher. <laughs> teacher. So it's important to know once you have um, arrived at you know, your personas and coming up with you know, what cities they're in, what language, what age, you also come to a place of grouping them, okay? And for people that are starting off, what you want to do is to figure out who we call early adopters. Once you group them, who are your early adopters, right? Those are the folks we want to start designing for, okay? Who are the ones with the immediate pain? So for the professional art supply business, right, they could be, say, close to ODU, right? Otomiya University. So they would be, okay, maybe our early adopters could be students, okay? Or so you need to figure out who can you easily get to first, the segment. Who can you easily get to first? And we want you to think of design from their perspective. I hope that makes sense. And then once you have learned all the skills in the next three weeks, what you're gonna do is keep um, designing for, keep coming up with your brand kit for the different um, artists, if, um, the, not artists, the different uh, customer segments, if you would like. But this session that we're going, these sessions that we're going to have we want you to focus on the customer segment with that immediate pain that you can address and alleviate, okay? I know that we, your solution is for everybody. We love saying that. Who are your customers? Everybody. <laughs> but um, you can't reach everybody at once. What we can do is do them in batches and in seasons until we have a repeatable model that can reach masses, okay? Um, the next thing that you want to do is um, define your brand personality. So if you were to think of your brand as a person, um, what comes in mind? Are you more modern or classic? Are you more luxurious or affordable, playful or serious? So what? What adjective describes your brand? Especially the people that you're trying to reach or your customer, your first customer segment. All right, the next one is to identify, oh, this is still identifying your brand personality, but there are 12 different, brand, this is just a general research. There are 12 different main brand personalities. And I hope you guys can see it, but here, you know, we have artists, we have innocent, and let's just take one category here. We have an outlaw, a magician, a hero, right? Um, one of, outlaw is more like leaving a mark. My brand is focused on, you know, liberating people that are hiding, liberating people that you know, are hiding behind really delivering the right solutions. And so we use yellow, right, to communicate that out um, for liberation. So you may want to, if you're doing more innovative or creative, you see that Canva itself, their main color is blue and Canva, they're creators, right? It's for artists. So you would want to use a color like that. But these are just general rules. I think it helps to kind of help with the design process, design thinking process. 
Okay, so after you do that, then you can pick the brand name. I know some of us love to start from there, but there are many different ways that you can um, come up with a brand name. And this is just an example. You can be more descriptive. This logo is, whose logo? I would hope everybody knows that logo. Test. You know, there's a game that Bank puts of America. logos. Yes, Bank of America. I see Gina's face like. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's Bank of America. It's, it's a, Bank of America is a bank, right? So it's a descriptive name. Exactly what it is. Bank of America um, has a descriptive name. And then um, Google is more inventive. Like Google was not a word. So it was something that was invented. However, there are many other ways here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, where I have this link here, seven different types of um, brand names that you can pick for. Once you go on this link, you will actually get um, descriptions of each one of them. So that will be made available to you. So you can really take your time if you actually haven't, if you're having difficulties actually thinking of a good brand name. All right, then we can actually move on to the logo. So the type of logos, in the general role, we have about seven types of logos. Um, there's more an abstract one, which is kind of like the Pepsi type. There's a mu mus Muscat, you know, combination mark, um, an emblem, you know, more institutions, universities, um, academia or academies type tends to use this um, or oh, governmental institutions tend to do that as well. Um, NASA's logo is just the abbreviation, right? Um, like letters. And then a uh, picture one, uh, which is Apple and a word mark, which is just based on the word itself, Google. So what type of, um, logo do you have or do you want to use? All right. Okay, so the next step would be your font. All right, there are different types of fonts. Yes, definitely Canva has lots of different types of fonts, but you want to be able to have at least two types, two or more types of fonts one that you use for your headers, like bold letters, your main, what we call your main font. So for example, this particular PowerPoint that I'm using, there are only two fonts, okay? You don't wanna get people confused, but it's actually the two of the same name. So it's called grow, Grotesque and the, there's a bold version of it, which is the one that I'm using for the header, okay? There's a medium version of it and there's a light version of it. Sometimes you can pick a whole different top, um, so you can go with grow text, and, but at the same time, you can pick a different type of font, let's say open, open um, serif or something like that, which will look totally different, but they're, you know, two different, font names, but I really like it when you pick a font that has a medium version of it, the name, um, a medium version of the same font and a light version of the same font. So you can use the light version for the text, you know, the background stuff, then you can use the medium for your subheader. So right here, your subheader. So this is the medium version of the same font right? It looks very, almost very different. You can use this for the bold, head, big main topics. Subheader can be the medium one, and the text itself can be the light. So all throughout this presentation, that is what you will see, and it keeps that consistency for messaging. Very important. All right. 
So the next thing that you move on is your brand voice, all right? So if you were to think of your brand as a person, again, what would you start off with? That's the question. Um, is your brand more friendly, playful? Um, that's what you want to think about. It's when you think about your brand character or persona. What's the ideal picture of person from your brand? Again, we go back to being customer focused and not being product or self focused, right? You want to really think about your ideal customer. How are they more professional? Or are they more playful versus just thinking about yourself? and um, what you want to put out there. So be more customer focused and less product or self focused. All right, so the next one is the tone. The tone is really kind of like the vibe that your brand gives off, right? Um, what type of feelings do people, uh, feeling do I get when I think of you, of your brand? What vibe do I get? Is it more personal? Um, do you sound more scientific when um, you are talking? Okay, so the language is what kind of words do you use? What kind of words you will use for your social media conversations? Um, it's important to think about, are you sounding serious because you know, you're addressing a serious problem and your language needs to be serious or are you sounding more fun because you're more creative, you know, um, like, you know, magazines, articles sounds more fun and creative to read. But if maybe you are addressing academia, you would want to sound more serious and maybe scientific, right? With a tone of scientific, right? And a tone of um, maybe you want to inspire students at the same time but a character of inspirational, all right? So the purpose, why are you on social media in the first place or whatever platform you're trying to communicate on, why are you there? Very important. So for the type of business I have, education is big, 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 right? So we are there to educate to give information. And so what is the purpose of your social, why do you wanna be on social media? Um, it's also important. Okay, you can have a chance to look at this, but it is very true that colors, all colors have different representation. And I kind of showed you some in the personality when we were talking about, about brand personality. But for example, green evokes stability, prosperity, growth, and connection to nature. So someone that's talking about wealth or wealth generation, and <clears throat> excuse me, would want to use green because green really symbolizes prosperity. Um, that's what people think about when you think about green. Let's take another random color, orange. Orange stands for playfulness, um, vitality, and friendliness, okay? So depending on how you want to go, you may want to do that, all right? So you guys get the point. I think blue, a lot of innovative and tech solutions tends to use blue a lot and a lot of creatives and I, I said innovators use blue. So once you have the slide, um, you can take a look at it as well. But once we start doing the exercises, I'll attach the slide to the chat so you can pull it from your computer immediately. All right, so colors, we're still talking about colors. You want to pick three colors, okay? You wanna have a base, you wanna have an accent color and a neutral color. So I decided to do my business. This is our color here. So if you look at our logo, you will see that um, the light itself is this color. 
and then um, an accent color is this gray here, and then the, our neutral color is the white. All right. All right, so proper imagery is the next thing that we will do. Imagery is, you know, the pictures that you'll be using, the graphics that you'll be using. Um, sometimes it's cartoons that people use. Um, all of that has to convey a particular message, right? So in this pictures that I gathered here, the point of it is to connect with an audience that you're trying to create cohesiveness, right? So some, uh, say a software company that is trying to get everyone to work online on the same software, you will use pictures like this. You guys see pictures like this all the time because it shows a team of people um, working together. So this, <clears throat> this is the link here that I told you about that you can, the link at the bottom, you can go on this free website and get pictures like these, okay? You just type in the keyword. So if you're fashion, oh, they have great interior design stuff. They have kitchen stuff. I think everything that was mentioned here on of the people that we have in the group right now, you can get a good, good pictures of it. From that and we'll be working on that as well. Okay, so the final thing would be to actually pull everything together. So as you see here, um, this particular brand has all the colors here. Um, they have their logo here, the font here, and also they have the color numbers here. So your brand kit, uh, whether you decide to use what um, Canva provides or you want to pull up a Word document and create your own, you know, put everything in one place yourself, you can do that. But the whole point of it is a guide, right? It's a guide for yourself and your team so that you can always use the same font, always use the same colors and the same um, font color as well as font name so that you're not mis mixing it all around. So for example, as you know, Old Dominion has a brand guide, um, Norfolk State University has a brand guide because it's such a large organization, everybody needs to be sending out the same colors, right? The same messaging or voice and a similar um, uh, font. They actually tell you to use a particular font so the marketing folks will be out to get you if they see your materials out there without the same font. Um, it's actually happened to me before at Norfolk State, but it's very important because this is the message that you are conveying. Someone may never meet, you know, the governance of Norfolk State or the vision, but what they're going to meet is the message and the things that we put out. So it's important for all of us to be saying the same thing and using the same colors and font that we're told to use. So it really doesn't end here once you have your brand kit, right? Um, you're probably like, what if I change my mind? You change your mind, right? But if you actually do these fundamentals that I um, started out with and you actually Think about the principles, the things that cannot change, which is your customers, right? Their pains are always going to be there. You're just alleviating the pains with your solution. They're always going, um, and it's going to come up over and over again, and you're going to provide the right solution for your customers. So the particular problem that you're solving through your business is always going to be there, right? and the people will remain similar, you will just be adding different segments to them. So if you really start off forcing yourself to think about the problem, the value, and the different customer segment, you will not go wrong if you're customer minded and you won't be changing it as often, all right? 
the goal is not to change it as often. The goal is to force yourself to get it right. But you're welcome to change it. Um, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't really end here, right? I like to say that this is just the beginning. And I mean, Canva allows you to look very, you know, official, you know, what celebrities are putting out, we're all putting out the same thing <laughs> um, in our age and time, and that can be you. So I like to end here that there is a new celebrity in the world and it's you, okay? I said that the 14 year old can do it and so can you, all right? You may not be computer savvy, but I'm not marketing for Canva or anything because Canva is not paying me. <laughs> but <laughs> what I'm saying is that Canva is user friendly, so you can do it, all right? So in the first hour, what I wanted to cover is really um, this part, um, getting the information out. I will bring up my contact page again. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm going to um, attach the file so that you can have the file yourself. All right, can you try that link and for me to see if it works? It did not, it said your file can't be accessed. Yeah, it said the same thing for me as well. Okay. It wants you to um, pull it from Google. So that's what I'll do for my Google Drive. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and get started. Once you guys start working on the exercise, I'll figure out how to get it on your- You can just send me the file and I'll email it out to everybody with the survey. Great, I sent it to you. <laughs> this okay, morning. that's fine. I'll send it out with the survey. Awesome, thank you. All right, so the first thing that we're going to um, get started with is your value proposition, all right? So I said that your value proposition talks about your pain, the pain that your customers are facing. So I would like for you to go out and write on your own page what your value proposition is. What is the pain, the obstacles, the challenge that you believe your customers are having?
if you have any questions, please um, unmute your mic and let me know. So once you write down those challenges, bad outcomes, pains that your customers are having, the next thing is to think about how your service or your product is actually alleviating that pain. So now you can talk about your customer segment. Who are your customers? Where are they hiding? What do they want to buy? Why would they want to buy from you? I have this pretty um, chart here that can help you kind of craft some insight. Um, does the city or location that they're in matter to you? Uh, does their age, gender, income, their social status matter to you? You can use this chart to kind of think through the things that matters um, concerning your customers. And I'm sure some of you have done this exercise before, but um, thinking about your customers, you cannot do it more than enough. So you want to be thinking about, you know, what they're interested in, what their values are and their attitudes. All of that really helps. How many of you think you got this? I think I can narrow down some of them, but I don't have everything in each column that is needed to figure out who my target audience is. Okay, um, that's fine. You may not have to, you don't have to fill out everything. Um, sometimes, you know, income doesn't matter to someone, but just do your best. What is engagement? So engagement is thinking about how to best um, engage with them, like behavior-wise. So 
So, so for purchase is thinking about, you know, thinking about their purchase decision, like what they go through to finally actually open up your wallet to get from you. Engagement is how do you engage with them to pull them in? So the behavior part goes a little deeper. How do you narrow it down? My clientele is so vast. I'm not sure how to put it all into a single box. So yes. I'm having trouble of pinpointing exactly what they look like. Great, um, great question. Um, so that's why I have this example here concerning customer segments, right? Um, sometimes what people do is you kind of write out all these things, then you start finding the theme of the segments. So for example, um, going back to this, the professional art supply store or business has five different customer segments, right? They're selling to teachers versus um, artists. So what you wanna do is group the segment. Um, what's your business? Unfortunately, I can't see- Mine says right. uh, life coaching, holistic coaching. Awesome, and you're focused on? Trauma. Uh, I work with those who experience trauma. Okay, uh, that's awesome. Do you tend to know the areas that matters? Is it age group or? It's, it's uh, adults, young oh. adults, 18 up. Yes, so that's exactly what you wanna do is to, um, Maybe you, if you focus on the type of trauma, group that, um, okay. the, the age group, income, if it matters, and what they want. Okay. So, does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. It helps me to look at um, age, um, type of trauma, which is important. Um, income is workable. Um, right. That helps an awful lot, thank you. My pleasure. So like, um, this is for everyone, but you see how now the messaging can be different for each segment or your design, how you communicate with them. How are we looking? Unfortunately, for some reason, I can't go back to the chat screen. So I'm gonna need you guys to unmute your mic and talk to me. So we have our value proposition in our customer um, segments. Anyone need more time for a customer segment? All right. So the next thing is the brand personality. If you were to think of your brand as a person, again, going back to being customer centered. Um, are you more masculine or feminine, serious or playful? And if I'm missing any um, description or adjective here, you can go ahead and write whatever you got. Um,
So once we go into Canva and you start designing and picking the fonts and your name and all the fun stuff, you know, you want to have this personality in mind, right? Because the imagery and everything that you use will affect that. So for example, the life coach and the trauma that was just coaching tra life um, trauma that was just mentioned, you wanna do something more like mature, right? What does mature images look like versus um, youthful, right? For the interior designer, you may be, depending on what you're going for, you may want to, if you have affordability, like if you're going with a theme of affordability, like low cost, you may want to go on that side. But if it's interior design and high fashion, high class, all of that, you want to use that person have that personality of all luxury. I am not sure with my um, kitchen designing business and selling mm -hmm. how to quite do this because I work with, I've worked with a, like a whole range of different budgets. I'm anywhere from like traditional transitional to modern. So like, because I can do all different looks. So I'm not really sure. Okay. So let's just go back to this. Um, you have, have you grouped them? Sorry? Have you grouped your customer segments? Again, it's anyone I have like, so it could be a young couple that's bought their first starter home that wanna update a kitchen. Um, often their home is like a lower priced home, mm -hmm. maybe not nowadays, but like in today's market, but yeah, they wanna update and have a fresh look. And I do a lot with new builds retirees, they might be uh, selling their big house and moving into a condo or a new condo development and then needing a kitchen. So this is the part where I'm struggling because I don't really have a, a customer base that just fits. So yeah, I might have to have a little bit different style of post. I don't know if that's too yeah. incohesive. I'm not sure. No, yeah, that's the point of um, us talking about the segments, right? Right. Because as a young couple and I'm in my first, you know, um, renovated apartment, you know, what you're going to, how you're going to talk to me is different from someone that wants to buy a new house, right? Um, yeah. So you have to group us. And once you do that, for the sake of this course, what we're teaching is who are those people that you can reach the most often and more, right. um, and th those, that's the brand we want you to focus on for this course, because we can't do all your segments, right? It's a great right. thing <laughs> that you have all the segments, but I was, this, go ahead. I was thinking, sorry, I was thinking that my Facebook posts will be probably to a more mature audience, like okay. mid-age and up, and the Instagram posts are probably going to be for my younger clientele, I think. Yes, that you got it. That's it. Okay. That's it. I am looking at all this information and I'm sponging. Um, Sponge it. Interesting yeah, I'm, word. I'm, well, I'm sponging because there's so many different threads and I'm trying to fit it all in and um, I'm a little overwhelmed. So Talk to I me. Need, I just need to figure out um, how to start where I'm starting at. And that is um, understanding your format. I know we're okay. in the professional art supply, but I think I'm somewhere else in the basic beginning. I'm not sure how to get back to that. Okay. Um, yeah, with the value proposition, which I think is good for me, because that's my baseline in building up to the other ones. 
Okay, so, tell me, tell me the idea. The ideal is to look at um, figuring out the pain and the reliever and mm -hmm. building on that to do the other parts for me is important um, because I'm concrete and the things that you put up there, I'm trying to pull up my vision and I'm getting yeah. lost. Okay, no problem. The, um, unfortunately, I can't see the names I get on my computer. So can you tell me the company again? It's a Steam Mac LLC. Yeah, but and what is what problem is your business solving? Oh, duh. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It's basically emotional discomfort. If you are in a trauma framework, you're not sure how to sort okay. through that. And that's okay. what my company helps you to do. Okay. And you'll be doing it through more like coaching education? Well, I, I'm, yes, I'm a coach and it's a combination of a mentorship. It's a, a with education and a conglomerate of different components depending on where they are. Okay. So then your value proposition, if I ask you what benefit do they get from you? What would you say? Uh, stabilization. Stabilization. Emotional. Yes. Okay, um, that's great. Instead of being helter skelter, you're more of a of an even plane. Yeah. Yeah. So stability. Um, I think accountability is one. Stability okay. is good. Okay. Um, that's the value that you're offering. I mean, that's a transformational value. Right. That's number one that is um struggling with trauma, being able to manage that. Right. Yes. Day to day pieces. So to yes. speak. So that's your value right there. Is you're offering okay. management, accountability, stability, and all of that is grouped into like transformation. Okay. Right? So right. Okay. So your customer segment, you already told me it's older people, right? Yes, 18 and above. Yes. Okay. Are you um dealing with specific type of traumas? Not necessarily a specific type, but it's more of them choosing what they decide to focus on. Um, okay. Because I'm I'm co-creating with them, so it's it's open. Yeah. As long as they're functional. All right. So the things that will matter to your segment, a lot of them would be right here in the demographics, I believe. So I wouldn't have to do each of those components, those blocks. I could choose. No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. That's where my confusion got. I was trying to fit everything in. Fit those everything. <laughs> no, it's just I, um, what matters. Okay. Again, customer focus. What matters to your customers? I That's see. Okay. That helps a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Start, you guys, we're, uh, we're taking time to do this because. A lot of times the mistake is made right here in that early stage of grouping your customer segments and um, giving the right message to the right customer segment is important. Okay, how we're good, we can move on? Yes, yes for me, thank you. My pleasure. All right. So the next thing is, um, if you want to use some of these personalities, you can to group your folks. So I think um, for the trauma example that we just um, found out about is, I, is, to me, it sounds like it falls more around here with Caregiving is a service-based business as well. And she's also providing structure, right? A management and a managerial way for you to deal with trauma. All right. Uh, did I move too fast? No, that was fine. Okay, so that was good. Okay, great. Between this two slides is to help you with the personality. All right, 
Now, I'm sure some, most of you have names, but if you have a name, you can say it out loud. Let us know your, your business name. If you don't, this is what you do, is think about, do you want to be more founder-based, right? There are um, experts and people that coach and do consulting that just goes by their name, right? Or you want it to be more geographical. You have the PDF now, so you can get the link if you want more description about each one of them. Brand name. Everyone has a brand name? Yes, I do. Okay. All right, so now we are going to start off with thinking about the logo. Do you want to go with more of a letter description? See, we're not going on Canva yet. You're still writing on paper. And once we go on Canva, you're just gonna be designing on the actual Canva, um, the actual tool. But are you, what are you thinking about for your logo if you don't have one yet? You wanna go with more of an acronym or a picture? Like this is the type of logo I have is the, I fall in between the abstract and the pictorial logo. My logo is right here. I think I would like a combination mark like Burger King where it's um, a picture and words together. Nice. So whichever one you want to gear more towards or if it's a combination, just write it down before we get into Canva. <clears throat> How are we doing? Should I give more time? This is Margaret. I have a question. Yeah. I have a company name, which is really my name, the MR Bradley Group Incorporated. But nice. my brand name really is around what I do, which is woulda, coulda, shoulda. Can I have two different things or do I need just one? You have a company name. Yes, the Bradley Group. Do you market that at all? Which one do you display? I really use the Bradley Group um, just because I sort of changed my offerings, but I wrote a book and the title of the book is Woulda, Coulda, Shoulda. And a lot of the programs are around how to remove obstacles to success. And that's the name that sort oh, of I get it. sticks with people. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, oh, when you meet me, you, remember, you don't remember Bradley Group, you remember Woulda, Coulda, Shoulda. <laughs> I get it. So that's like the product or service, right? Mm -hmm. But um, logos are really the symbol of the company. Okay, thank Maybe. you. Mm -hmm. That helps, thank you. No problem. Are you almost ready for people to log into Canva? Yes. Okay. This is the last one. Okay. Is everyone good on the logo idea that you have? All right. So today we're going to go in um, Canva and start off with your logo. I'm okay. excited. I'm going to pause video for just one second. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay, awesome. We are going on Canva. Canva is spelled C A N V A dot com. Um, this is how the main Canva page looks. So if you don't have a Canva account, I will need you to take a quick second to create one. The easiest way is to just sign in with your Google 
<clears throat> your Google or your Facebook. Um, but you also have um, the opportunity to click sign up down here. And it will allow you to um, sign in, uh, sign up. So does everyone have a Canva account? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Okay, just take a, can you take a quick second and please create it if you don't have one? If you are using the same screen to both um, watch me and work on Canva, you can split your browser into two. And that would be the best way where you can see what I'm doing and at the same time be able to use Canva. So you're how not do I, going. How do I do that? <laughs> okay, so if you um, do this and you, you have um, a second thing, all you do is right click. Oh, why is it not working? Right click and, uh, oh, excuse me. Right click and move tab to new window. What do I right click on? Uh, the tab or uh, the top here where my mouse is. Why don't I see your mouse? I don't understand. Do you guys see my screen? Um, I see just design anything purple. Yes. So you see my mouse word design anything is? I think I'm trying to get into that. I don't see your mouse, but maybe, hang on, maybe this is covering it. No, I don't see your mouse. Hold on. You can just go to the options and minimize your screen or exit full screen. Okay, I see. Let me go. All right, I got it. Everyone got it? Yeah, I had to minimize the screen. I had to reload camera. So this is my Canva page. Um, with okay. all my, you guys got it now. With all my designs here. But the moment you have this page, can you please let me know? Sure. I'm good. ABT is good. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so the way it works is quite simple. Once you're in this page, um, on this side here, if you click all your designs, it comes up um, once you start designing everything. But the best way to use Canva is to actually click right here, either right here where it says design anything, so you see more and it will pull up all the different categories of designs that's available. So what we'll be looking for is the logo one. So this is one way to get to finding the category and the logo, or you can type in the search at the bottom, at the top here where it says try letter, you can just type in logo. Sometimes I do that. And then it pulls up 
different types of movies. You think? Okay, I see it. Um, if you decide to use the search to do that, you can break it into the different category here where you see free and um, promo when you click on it. Some of these logos are free. So some of the graphics are not free. So what you wanna do is get the free version. So this is just an example before you guys get started. If it says pro here, it means that it's not free. So you want to be looking for one that says free if you are not willing to buy the actual image in there. The cool thing with Canva is once you get in, say you want to use this logo and you click it, even though it's pro, Let's do a free one. It goes in there. The cool thing with Canva is on the left side here, it breaks it into categories. They just recently added this feature. So you have hospitals, you have church, um, you have events. So just go through that and see if your category comes up. Um, I see interior design here, artists and art and design category. We have computer, food, education. So education, if you're doing more coaching, consulting, all of that is education. Um, I didn't hear of any restaurant ideas, but they have that as well. They have music. They have games and rec, rec. Also, if you're in the beauty. So for example, the 14 year old I told you guys about earlier that wanted to start the skincare um, company, her logo was under beauty. <clears throat> so she was able to just go in here and pick something to start off working from so that you don't have to um, start from scratch. I told you guys about starting from scratch. The first thing I put out, my church fam, my close people that makes decisions laughed at me. So I think the template is great and to get inspiration to do that. They have attorney, automotive, all of that. Okay. Okay, let's see. So, please try and select something. For example, this is, I'm using this one because my logo um, that you see in my presentation started from this particular design. All right, and I changed it to city lighter, reduce the font. You can reduce the font up here. I wanted it to be more white in the background. You see my primary colors right here. How are you guys doing? Have you been able to find, let me know if you've been able to find a font, a logo to start with. I found one, it's coming up. Okay. Anyone else? Hmm. 
I had done one last week. Oh, cool. <laughs> Are you comfortable with it based on talking what we about did today? Mm -hmm. um, I think so. Okay, good. I don't know what that means. Okay, let's look at this. Um, all right. Oh, I'm, I stopped sharing my screen because I want to see some faces. Let me do my... Paula, how are you doing? I know you said um, you have a t-shirt company. Hello, uh, you called my name? Yeah, how, how are you able to do it? Yes, I am. Um, I'm more like looking at the process. The process is that you're indicating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already have uh, an account with Canvas, and then I'm gonna follow that. I al already have like a logo. Okay. Like words and like the NASA words and pictures. Okay. And I'm going to put that in there later on and make sure I improve it. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Harry, let me show you. Let me go on picture. So this is the, you see the. Oh, you already the, printed them on the t-shirt. Okay, I see. Nice. All right. Thanks for sharing. No problem. Thank you. Okay. So we um are gonna end it off here next week. You'll be creating your brand kit, which um will go into Canva again. Sorry about that. And you'll be able to Pick your font, the three fonts that we talked about, and upload them up there. And you pick the primary colors as well. So once you do that, Canva will let you um, see it wherever, whatever design you decide to pick on. And you'll be able to um, change the colors do whatever you want. Are there any next questions until next time? Um, I put the link for next week in the chat. So please register because I'm going to close it out at the end of the day. Um, and, the, and I'll send you the link individually for the 26th if you want to come back. I have made the 26th now private. So it's not open to the public any longer. Okay, awesome. that's good. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So are there any last minute questions? Just one, the information you had today, would that be also be in the chat to pull up to work with until the next meeting? I'm yes. going to email the presentation out today to everybody along with the survey. Okay. Okay. And then next week, we're going to have a abbreviated version of this part because we'll have a lot of people online who did not get today's two hours. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yes, you guys have been absolutely wonderful.
Um, today you've learned about your value proposition, your customer segment. We've been able to talk about the logo and your brand personality. Next week, um, we'll go into you actually creating the brand kit. And that's where it's gonna include your font and your colors. And we'll go back to the logo and make sure those colors, exact. you have those exact codes for those specific colors. We don't want you changing your colors every um, design that you make. You want to be consistent. So if you have any questions, my email is in the presentation before next week. I'll be more than happy to um, answer any questions that you have, because I know some of you will go around and dig in Canva again. Awesome. Very good job. Very Thank good job. You. Very well posed. Very, very good. calm <laughs> in dealing with us. <laughs> no, it's very okay. Delivery. Very good delivery. Thank you for your patience, your calmness. Okay. Thank you. Thank as you well as your here. assistant there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you for being here. I told you guys it's easy. That 14 year old can do it. We can do it. Roger. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so the instructor remind. matters as well. Thank you everybody for attending. Um, just for to just as a reminder, I put the link in the chat, but I will also include it when I send the survey out after this. I will include the presentation materials, and I um, please have people register directly as opposed to sharing the link. It helps us out when we can take attendance here at the Women's Business Center and show how many people that we're providing services to. Your responses to the survey also help us get the funds to pay for programs like this. So it's very important to please respond uh, to the surveys. In addition to that, I made the 26 private because um, we already have a full class for next week. So we're gonna start over with some of this when you guys log back in next week for those that missed today. And um, after you log in next week, that's when I will send out the link for the 26th. Thank you very much, you everybody. Thank you yes. all very much. For okay. The information. Very Hi, good. everyone. Thank you. And bye. 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 Bye